Okay, uh, all these fuses here have one thing in common. You can see that they're blown. On the window one, you can see right here, it'll be all flashed over and you won't be able to see anything inside the window. Pretty much the same thing in both of these, although this one sometimes can be a little tougher. The automotive type fuses also have a flash mark in them. And of course the uh, glass fuses do also. But these fuses here, you can tell they're blown. Now let's look at another type of fuse. Okay, this fuse, there's no way to tell that this fuse is blown. Uh, it breaks inside and if you have a meter and you have the ability to uh, use the meter to put your own meter across it, you can find out if it's bad. Uh, however, you may open a disconnect. There's two fuses in there. They look fine, but they don't tell you anything about what they are. Now this one here, this is a slow blow. It's a TR35R. What I would do if I was you is I would take these uh, fuses out uh, if there's two of them, take both of them out, take them down to your local hardware store and say, give me this exact fuse. If they can come up with the exact same fuse, go ahead, put it in. If that does your job, then you know uh, that the fuse was a problem. I, want, I don't really want to say the fuse is a problem, because usually if a fuse blows, it blows because something else overdrew it. Uh, it could have been like I've shown before. If the fuse is a little burned looking, that the disconnect's bad, it could have been, you know, a, a locked up motor, uh, something like that, in which case it'll blow again. Occasionally fuses will blow, uh, just kind of nuisance blows, that you never do find out why. So you can take this down, you'll have to take both of them down, if there's two fuses in your disconnect, you'll have to take both of them down, replace both of them, and... Uh, if the unit starts running, uh, life is good. Uh, one other little thing about these things. This fuse here is a 35 amp fuse. Now I can put, in the same clamps this fits in, I can put a 60 amp fuse. Do not do that. If it's a 35, if it's a 40, if it's a 25, whatever it is, put in the same size fuse. That fuse was sized for the motor load and the wiring that you're using uh, to supply power to this thing. Take an example. This is a 35 amp fuse. Okay. I may run that on... Uh, some cases I could run it on uh, number 10 wire, sometimes number 8. However, if I put a 60 amp on here... I would need at least number six. And number six is a much bigger wire. I will be overdrawing my circuit and my wiring is not designed for that high a fuse. So you have to put the same fuse in that you took out. Uh, you're playing with fire literally here if you do not use that same fuse. Uh, you can go smaller, although I wouldn't uh, generally. That's generally not a good idea uh, because it made nuisance trip on you. But remember, use that same size fuse that came in. Don't cheat by 10 amps or something like that because all it's going to do is heat that wire. And if it heats the wire and build, burns down the house, it wasn't a very good deal, was it? So, uh, take the fuse down to the hardware store. Uh, get the same thing. Don't put a, uh, a a single element fuse in where a dual element time delay was in because it'll probably kick itself off. Uh, put in like for like on this every time. And that's the fuse.